I find it pretty difficult to understand programming paradigms, especially in JavaScript, unless you try them out in the real world first. Why would one need to know those paradigms and can they actually help you write better code? Let's find out together. A programming paradigm is a method or way in which we write code to solve different types of problems. And there are many paradigms that we can use to write code. Also, every programming language has a paradigm or a number of paradigms that are best suited for it. If you are a JavaScript developer, then I'm pretty sure you've heard that JavaScript is a multi-paradigm language. But what does it actually mean? It basically means it's quite flexible and supports different types of programming styles, such as procedural, object-oriented, or functional. We are going to look into the real-world examples in a minute, but first, let's take a look at the theory and define what types of categories of paradigms we have. The top-level categories are imperative and declarative. Let's start with the meaning of imperative. It's one of the oldest paradigm categories and is the closest to the low-level machine architecture. You write it by defining an explicit set of commands in a sequence and it runs it step by step. The main focus of paradigms in this category is how to achieve a certain goal. Declarative category, on the other hand, focuses on logic and concepts rather than a sequential flow. In other words, it specifies the result that you want to get and not how to get it, and is concerned with what needs to be done rather than how it should be done. All of this will be much clearer once we see the code, I promise. But for now, imagine a friend is coming over and they don't know where you live. The imperative approach would be giving your friend detailed directions for a specific route to your place. The declarative approach, on the other hand, would be just giving your friend an address, a map, and letting them decide how to get to your place on their own. Just as a side note, if you want your friend to get to your place as soon as possible, make sure you smash the like button, this will help out tremendously. But here's the most important part. Each category has a subcategory, which will define how exactly your code is going to look like. For example, imperative category is divided into procedural, object-oriented and parallel paradigms. First, the procedural one. The funny thing about it is that the idea behind it is the same as its parent that we already discussed. It's essentially like a recipe that a computer can follow. The code can be reused in different parts of the program, given that you nicely separate some chunks and put them into functions. Another benefit is that it's simple to read and understand. Although when dealing with complex problems, there's a risk that you can end up with a huge volume of code. We start off by declaring the variables that the ATM has already built in or received from a customer and jump right into the next step, which is checking whether the requested amount is already available at the moment. If so, we will proceed. Otherwise, we throw an error by explaining what happened. Then we are calculating how many nodes we need to dispense and start off with larger nodes as every ATM does of course, which is quite annoying. We then get to smaller nodes by checking whether we have the needed amount every time and at the end we give the customer a list of nodes to dispense. Now the object-oriented subcategory, or rather object-oriented programming, is different in a way that it's based on an idea that code can be broken down into classes that have different properties and can perform different actions. Objects created from those classes are meant to communicate with each other and inherit methods and properties from each other. The reason why OOP is so famous is because it mimics our real-world view of objects, making it easy to grasp. Class person has a name, age, and job properties. Class job has a work method. An object created from a person class can call a function of a job class to make some money. Using OOP in our ATM example would look something like this. We have one ATM class that has a constructor that receives a desired amount to withdraw from a customer. Then we have the same functions we had before, but as class methods now, and we have a new run method, which kicks off the whole process by calling all other methods. We create a new instance of the ATM here and call the run method. The last imperative subcategory is parallel processing, which many would argue does not exist in JavaScript. In fact, that's no longer true. With the introduction of web workers in browsers and worker threads in Node.js, there is now a real way to do parallel programming in JavaScript. 
Workers are only useful in CPU intensive operations, which means we won't be using it for our ATM example. Essentially, the way it works in a browser is that every tab you open gets assigned a separate thread that executes the code. But with web workers, you can create arbitrary threads for a single tab. The same principle works in Node.js. You simply require a new worker thread. Now that we're done with the imperative side, let's talk about the declarative category of paradigms. Declarative approach includes functional programming, logic programming, and an auxiliary data-driven programming. Functional programming has its roots in mathematics and is somewhat a language-independent paradigm, which means you can implement it in many programming languages as long as you try hard enough. You can basically write functions that carry out every types of tasks without using a global state or mutating any global values. That's where the immutability comes into play. Functional programming also tries to avoid things like loops and instead relies on recursion. This paradigm generally reduces complexity, but in some cases it can be really difficult to scale with it. I tried rewriting the ATM logic in a functional way and now it looks something like this. As you can see, the logic is structured using pure functions that ideally will have to return a value instead of mutating a value from outside. I haven't used any functional methods built into JS, such as MapReduce, because there wasn't really a need for it. In the bottom of the file, we simply call functions and pass around the return values from them. The next paradigm, in my opinion, is the most interesting one. Logic programming is not widespread on web or mobile development, and in normal programming languages, such concept does not exist at all. The concept of it is that we have a database of facts and rules and some boundaries. The execution of a program is much like a proof of a mathematical statement. Programming languages such as Prolog and Mercury are specifically built for this. So let's actually take a look at a very interesting example whether Socrates is mortal or not using Prolog. We obviously cannot use JavaScript for this. So the first meaningful line here is interpreted as if B then A, meaning if human then mortal, aka all humans are mortal. The next line assumes that Socrates is a human. Cool, but how does that help? The reason we define these relations is that we can then perform queries. In this example we ask, is Socrates mortal? For which we get true. Because earlier we defined that if you are a human, then you are mortal too. Logic programming is used for research and testing complex theorems and is closely connected to machine learning and AI. I'm gonna make a separate video on it, so make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss it. Last but not least, data-driven programming. This one's pretty easy. Have you used SQL for dealing with relational databases before? I bet you have. Data-driven programming is exactly that. It's based all around data and its movement. Statements are already defined by the database program that we can use to query, update and delete entities. Before we summarize everything with pros and cons, I would like to mention one of my favorite learning platforms that I use every day. Brilliant. Brilliant.org is an interactive platform where you can learn anything related to STEM, science, technology, engineering and math. The keyword here is interactive. The courses you take are full of visual explanations which will help you learn six times faster than with ordinary video content. I'm currently taking a course on logic which helps me with coding challenges that I come across as a software developer. Check out the link in the description to get started for free and you will get a 20% discount for your annual subscription. Remember, investing in yourself always pays off in the long term. So pros of the imperative paradigms of categories are that they are very simple to implement and they are very simple to read. They are also quite scalable, especially with object-oriented programming. And they contain all normal programming basics that we're used to, such as variables, loops and so on. Cons would be, it can get messy with complex problems, and most of the time everything is mutable, which can lead to side effects, which probably wouldn't be an issue with OOP. For the declarative category, the pros would be, well, it's just cool and it can have really good applications in math and data-related problems. But the cons are that it's difficult to design and implement them, and that the solutions usually don't scale that well. Hope you learned something today, and as always, if you did, please give a like and subscribe for more videos like this. Also, make sure you follow me on LinkedIn, GitHub and TikTok for even more interesting content. I will see you in the next one, and goodbye.